By the time you finish this video, you'll know all about an aspect of 3D rendering that gets neglected way too often. Anisotropy. What is it? When should you use it? How do you use it? Well, I'm going to show you, but if you want to follow along, pause the video and head over to Production Crate and search for surface imperfections and download a few of these maps really quick. All right, are you back? Sweet. Now we all know about the roughness channel. Basically, if a surface is more bumpy or rough, then it makes the reflections look softer. But what if the surface has little microscopic grooves that all go in the same direction, like a vinyl record or like the bottom of a pot? That'll make the reflections stretch and blur in one direction instead of being circular. That's called anisotropy. Most 3D programs will have a setting for anisotropy isotropic reflections if you go into the material properties. Typically you can control the direction of the stripe and the stripiness of the stripe. And if you plug a black and white pattern into the anisotropic direction channel, you can get some really cool results like this. The first use is to bump up the quality of your texture maps. Let's make a really quick metal sphere and then plug in our smudge map into the roughness channel of the material. We've all seen this before and it's kind of boring. Real quick, pause this video again and go rub your fingers on something shiny like glass or chrome. Do those smudges look just blurry to you? Heck no. Those smudges have some directionality to them. It's observing these little details that's going to make you a better 3D artist than half the other artists out there. So let's take that same smudge map we use for the roughness and plug it into anisotropy instead. Rotate the direction slider until it looks good. At this point it might look cool to plug a black and white noise into the direction channel again so that the smudges don't go all in the same direction. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, let's look at a more complex example. Here's that horse from the last video where we talked about creating a 3D creature from scratch. Go check out that video below if you missed it. So we're in Substance Painter here, and the texture is done, but it kind of looks like a plastic toy. That's because the reflections are circular instead of directional. But horses aren't smooth, they're covered in short hair. So adding anisotropic reflections is a good way to hint at the directionality of that hair and really elevate this guy to the next level. So here's how we do it. First, make sure that you're using a shader that supports anisotropy, like this one, PBR Metal Rough Anisotropy angle. Then add a fill and turn off everything except anisotropy level and anisotropic direction. Turn up the anisotropy level. We can fiddle with this number to our liking. I'll turn up the level to about 0.5. Now rotate the direction so it looks however you want it. But you'll notice a problem. The directionality doesn't line up at the UV border. You can control the directionality and the flow of the reflections using flow maps, but here's a really quick hack that'll help you skip all that. Create a black mask on your anisotropy layer, and then right click and add a generator and search for UV border. This will put a black line along the border of all your UV shells. Now add a blur filter to soften it and voila, you've masked out the effect near the UV seams and no one can tell the difference. So now it feels like the horse is covered in short hair. Speaking of hair, anisotropy is a great way of leveling up your hair textures. I'm going to go improve this guy's hair in Marmoset just to show you that this concept is the same in every program. So first step, I purposely set up his UVs to go all the same direction as you can see here. I did that so when I turn on the anisotropic effect, it'll all seem to flow down the length of his hair. So let's crank up the anisotropic intensity and important last step, fiddle with the direction slider to make sure it feels right. And just look at the difference. Without anisotropy, his hair looks like plastic, but with it, his hair looks like hair. So pretty easy, right? Leave a comment with any examples of anisotropy that we might have missed. And if you want to learn more about Substance Painter, head over to this video right here. It's got all the information you need just to get started. And check out Production Crate for more assets and more tutorials. Alright, later creators.